Kanto, good evening. And today I will talk about the manifestations of my concepts and ideas to create a naturally grounded, honest, and humble house that collectively answers the needs of my client and expresses advanced building techniques we have learned throughout the past weeks. So to start off, uh, I would like to introduce the house concept and the direction that I took when tackling the needs of my client. To give a brief overview of the clients, they are composed of a senior mother, a single mom, a son and daughter-in-law, and their granddaughter. Each of them having their respective rooms and bathrooms and of course their basic necessities in the house. So the lot given to us measures about 20 meters by 15 meters with existing buildings on both sides. It was very important to make use of the existing tree as a design element in which it adds to the lacking verticality of the building while creating a shaded environment to the back end of the house. So as shown in the plan, I intentionally created three main entryways. A main entryway in the spine, a large entryway to the living room, and another entry to the rightmost part of the building. These various entrances create different kinds of experiences, while some extending its space to the environment. The powder room is hidden in the staircase not too far from the living room, while not far enough to intrude to the rather private spaces. I made the water feature a pond that disconnects the living room to the backyard, while also intending to create an embrace of natural environment to the alfresco. Speaking of the alfresco, one of the most unique features of my house was to create two dining areas. I have given a specific dining area exactly enough for the family and an exterior dining area for when there are guests. On to the second floor, the idea remains uh, simple with a condensed space that conforms to uh, the requirements and a building that connects the two buildings. So here are the other sheets that would uh, prove uh, important in the building process. So my approach to this uh, was to find the middle ground to manifest my architectural identity and experiment with concepts of interiority to create spaces of different levels of intimacy. So as you could see, I created three buildings with a spine in the middle. My intention was to already introduce the idea of modularity so that it becomes versatile to changes in material or construction. However, I also wanted to incorporate horizontality so it doesn't become too sterile. As you can see, I have made use of the surrounding environment to create a balance in its vertical orientation as it expresses depth and opens up considerable large openings for recreation. On to the prefabrication. The first step of the advancement of construction of my building was to transform the house to a fully prefabricated structure. At first, I was quite hesitant uh, as large concrete panels was my only idea of prefabrication. However, the more I looked on to these 21st century uh, building materials, I have found a booming material that is highly advanced and very sustainable which is CLT, or cross-laminated timber. At first, I, was, uh, I thought it was too good to be true, but the more I looked on it, 
the more I was convinced that this would be the perfect material for my structure. My building highly uh, is dependent on its structural walls, as the original idea was to avoid using columns but to use sheer wall all around the house. Uh, the great thing about TLT was that even with its provisions for doors and windows, it could still maintain a considerable amount of structural integrity as long as these provisions are cut with a CNC machine. Because of how CLT has transformed my idea of construction, I wanted to make my own ways of attaching CLT based on my research. I have researched a simple joint system and uh, even taken inspiration from uh, Peter Zumthor and how he shows the joints uh, of his wooden walls as he was a cabinet maker before an architect. So on to our sheets. Uh, for the ground floor wall floor connection detail, the large concrete floor slab was, uh, that is supposedly screeded is now good for wall attachment. Angle brackets are primarily used for attaching uh, walls to floors, floors and shims are also added to retain its uh, verticality, minimizing its gaps. To add more moisture protection, this detail shows that the layer of timber fiber is added plus cordon steel panels which are rivet mounted to the CLT walls. Moving to the connection of the second floor to the ground floor walls, uh, we see the, a repeating joint system for provisions for the glue lamp beams with uh, knife plate connectors and a tree ply CLT floor. In terms of the connection of the second floor and the wall, the construction becomes more complex with the addition of a tongue and groove joint wood profile added with the proprietary angle brackets to reduce the vertical stress from the day to day. When connecting each floor, they depended on a similar joint system as the walls with the added self-tightening key uh, to rigidly connect each panel. The roof detail becomes a mixture of prefabrication and traditional building techniques. The roof makes use of a glue lamb rafters and tree ply CLT ceiling before it reaches the traditional insulation, battens, and roof tiles. On to our 3D printing and autonomous construction. Uh, it wasn't very hard to look for solutions and choose components to fit in the existing conditions. The construction component that I've chosen was the breeze blocks. For me, when I was thinking of which to develop, I considered using 3D printing machines that are available to the public. In this way, uh, 3D printing uh, different forms of, different, of the same component can depend on the needs of the users. The example in the diagram shows the various applications and benefits of having 3D printed building components using filaments that are available to anyone. Because of its versatility, biodegradable or recycled filaments can be used and is advisable to be used. When it comes to the 3D printing process, however, it becomes a bit more straightforward as your regular method of 3D printing in which it contains gaps, it's quite hollow inside to, incre to increase its rigidity while still being fairly lightweight. In terms of the autonomous construction however, evidently there are already robotics involved in constructing this advanced building material. So the very first stage of our construction is not found on site, rather it's found in the factory where CNC's, uh, CNC machines are widely available. The best thing about CLT is that it's so much better if uh, most of the solid panels are retained. CNC machines are greatly 
beneficial because they are very accurate all the time. This machine is also capable of doing complex tasks. It is quite flexible in manufacturing, it boosts production volume, reduces setup time, but most of all increases safety. The next autonomous construction involved is the concrete screening machine. The on-site construction of the, of the house begins when, uh, with the con concrete foundation and the preliminary unfinished concrete slabs. The, the automatic uh, concrete screening machine provides exceptional accuracy and performance at the cost of labor savings and time. Lastly, the use of an autonomous crane control system is involved in most part of the construction phase on the site. The crane provides the hand to lift and transport the CLT walls in the assembly phase of the construction. So all in all, I would say that considering the idea presented, I have successfully uh, incorporated the required technology in my design identity. I would not expect the use of these materials uh, suggested, but in turn, the CLT walls and the Corten steel actually provided the materiality that I was looking for. Overall, I am happy and proud to present this house and thank you for watching and goodbye.